Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and I'm excited to announce that Lightroom Mobile on the iPhone has arrived. Although many of us will use it as an extension of the desktop app, I expect that Lightroom Mobile on the iPhone will open up an entirely new opportunity for those of us that use the phone as a capture device, even if it's not necessarily the device that we get paid for using, but instead is perhaps the one that we use on a daily basis to communicate to the world through images. Since the overall feature set is the same on Lightroom Mobile for the iPad and the iPhone, instead of repeating everything that I've already demonstrated in the Lightroom for Mobile series, this video will focus on the new features and product improvements in this release. Of course, what you see here is also available on the iPad. Let's get started. Now, to begin, I want to make sure that you're running the latest version of Lightroom, so you'll want to run an update either through the Help menu or through Creative Cloud. You'll want to make sure that you've signed into your Creative Cloud, and you just need to make sure that you've downloaded the application for the iPhone. Now, when we sync images between the desktop app and the iPhone or the iPad, it's all based on collections. So we can see here that I have a collection called Japan Top 20, and I want to sync these in just a moment. Now in the previous release for the iPad, I could use my flags to either pick something or reject it. And sure enough, I can tap the P key and add a pick here, and that will show up on my iPhone or my iPad. However, now I can also use my star rating. So if I tap the 2 key, for example, to give this image two stars, when this synchronizes to my mobile apps, I'll be able to see that two-star rating. So let's just move through here, and I might give this image two stars, and this image two stars, and maybe that image as well. Excellent. Now, another new feature that we've added is the ability for the mobile apps to respect a custom sort order. So for example, if I decide that the flow of these images would be better if perhaps maybe I start with this image, and then maybe this image comes next, then maybe we add a vertical, go back to horizontal, maybe drag this up here, this custom order this user order right down here will be respected when I move over to either my iPhone or my iPad. All right, let's go ahead and synchronize this, and I do that by just clicking in the empty box here to the left of the collection. Now we're ready to view this on my iPhone. As we can see here, here are all the different collections that I have synchronized, including that Japan Top 20. If I want to see the individual image, I'll just tap on the collection. And if I want to see the star ratings, you'll notice they're visible now, but if they're not visible, you just need to do a two-finger tap that will cycle us through these four different states where we get different overlays on our image. Let's go ahead and return back to the star rating, and then let's select this first image. I don't like it very much, so we'll go ahead and move to the next image and the next. Now, if I want to give this a star rating, well, right now it's set to flag, so if I were to tap and drag up, it would pick it. What I need to do is click on the little flag icon in the lower left and change that to a star icon. Now, when I click and swipe up, you can see that I can choose between one and five different stars. I'll go ahead and select three, and then we can return back to our view, and we can see that those three stars have been applied. Now, if I use this drop-down menu right here, you'll notice at the bottom that I'm sorting by capture time. If I want to change that to the desktop order, which was that custom sort order that I created on the desktop, it's as easy as selecting that. If I ever want to change it back, I can just choose from the list. Now I'm going to select the last image here of the bamboo, because I want to show you the presets that have been redesigned for mobile devices. I'll click on the middle icon that will show our presets. You can see that there are a number of different creative presets, so I could get some great cross-process effects or add a sepia tone. If I just want color effects, I can move over to the color. We can add some high contrast if we want to, or one of my personal favorites is this D-Vibe option. Of course, there are additional options here for black and white presets. I'll go ahead and leave that alone for now, but I will scroll over. I just want to add a little bit of an effect. In this case, I want to add a heavy vignette. And of course, these presets are all great starting points, but I can always return back here and actually make adjustments in order to refine them. 
So in this case, I think the image is a little too dark. So I'll use the exposure slider and just brighten it up a little bit. And of course, all of the changes that I make here are then going to be synced back to the desktop app. So that's one workflow, but there's another workflow that I'm also really excited about. Let's go ahead and create a new collection. I'll get rid of this uh, default timestamp right here. And then I'll just type in new photo. Now, as you can see, I can tap here to add photos from my camera roll. And this is a great way to add photographs that you've already taken. Now, if I want to add all of these images, I can simply tap and hold and then select all of them. But I'm going to scroll down and there are some images here that I don't need to import. So I'll tap and swipe across in order to remove those so that they're not imported. Then I'll tap on the check mark here and you can see that Lightroom is importing those images. Now, another way that I can set up my collection here on my iPhone is to have it automatically import as soon as I take a photograph. So by clicking Enable here, then when I take a photograph, not only will it be imported into the collection, it's also going to then synchronize with Lightroom on my desktop. So let's go ahead and we'll switch over to my camera right now. And then I'll just take a picture of this apple right here. We'll return back to Lightroom. And then you can see that one photo has been successfully imported so that when I tap on the collection, we can see that photograph of the apple right there. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the desktop to see the changes that we've made. And sure enough, if we look here in the Japan Top 20 collection, you can see that I've added those three stars to this image right here. And as far as the new collection that I made on the iPhone, if we scroll down here in Lightroom, you can see that there's a new collection set called from Lightroom Mobile. And if I click on that, inside of it, is that new photos collection that I just made. So all of the images that I added through the camera roll, as well as the one that auto imported when I took the new photograph of the Apple, all of those images, even though they originated on my phone, have been uploaded to the cloud and then downloaded locally onto this hard drive so that I have a copy of them here so I never have to worry about syncing my phone through a cable anymore. All of this will be done for me over the cloud. All right, and finally, let's pop over to my email. This is the email that I sent to myself from my iPhone. Obviously, I could have shared this with clients, but let's go ahead and click on that link. That will bring up the collection that I shared in a web browser so that anyone could see the images. And if they want to zoom in or move through them, all they need to do is click on an image and then use the navigation to scoot through them. Excellent. Be sure to check out the additional movies about Lightroom Mobile to get up to speed on all of the features. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.